Hello, and welcome to Pokemon 101. My name is Professor Gaming, as you can tell by the title slide of this presentation. Um, and you are taking Introduction to Pokemon, uh, or otherwise Pokemon 101. Uh, my per name is Professor Gaming. And yeah, as you guys know, all courses have been moved to online. Um, Palette University was asked to shut down uh, momentarily, and so all courses have been moved to online. Uh, if you will check your email in the syllabus, you will see all of the parts that will be listed for this series. Um, the homework is optional. It will all be due at the end of the semester, though. Um, so I do recommend that you do it because it is worth 20% of your overall grade. Um, but it is not due till the end of the semester. So that is a good thing. Um, yeah, just follow the notes. This shouldn't be too hard. Um, and for those of you that are a little bit older in this course, I feel like this will be most beneficial to you um, as we will be going over some of the basics of Pokemon. Um, so without any further ado, I prepared uh, a little bit of a presentation here just for you um, to get you started uh, into the world of Pokemon and the franchise as a whole. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop right in. So what is the goal? Why are we taking this course? Well, the overall goal is simple. We're here to increase your knowledge of Pokemon. That is it. Um, there's going to be a lot involved in this course. Um, so notes would definitely be preferred. Um, keeping it in a journal is a great idea. Notepad, whatever works for you. I am not picky about notes. These are yours. Um, the tests will be handed out um, and they will have a time window for which you have to complete it. But other than that, this is just for you. Um, this will count as one of your electives. It is not a core requirement here at Palette University, um, although it is highly recommended and highly advised. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin the presentation. So the content that will be covered in this class, and by this class, I mean this session. Um, so in this session, we're going to be going, what is slash our Pokemon? Because it is a plural, it is a singular and a plural noun. Um, the mediums of the franchise, the purpose, terminology, Pokemon generations and regions, and the basics of Pokemon. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first section, and that is what is slash our Pokemon. Um, after these short announcements, so a lot of you may be wondering, um, I feel bad because my, my, my daughter, my son, they can name more Pokemon than they can elements on the periodic table. And that's true, but you shouldn't count yourselves out just yet, okay? There are a few reasons as to why this is. So one, Pokemon is a fun and enjoyable game, and it is a medium that covers so many different areas that it's just impossible not to run into. This franchise has been going on for 20, almost 25 years now. Um, and yeah, and so the second reason is that there are much more Pokemon than there are elements. It's hard to memorize stuff like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, you know, fluorine, neon, iron, gold, copper, all that stuff when it's easier to just name stuff like Basculin, Slacking, Snorlax, Golbat, Zubat, like, these are just animals, there's a lot of them, and so, as of currently, there are over 900, uh, well, there's over 890 Pokemon with more to be added very, very soon, um, in the coming months. So yeah, what is slash our Pokemon? Well, a Pokemon is defined as a fictional animal that can be seen as pets or partners in the Pokemon world. So they're just animals. Yes, yes, for the most part they are. Some of them are hybrids, um, but a lot of them are just animals that are in the wild that are able to be captured inside of Pokeballs. Um, so yeah, it can also be referred to as the collective or individual of more than 890 pocket monsters. That is the breakdown of Pokemon. Pocket Monster. Pokemon. Pokemon Pokemon. Uh, not Pokemon, but, you know. There, there's a wide variety, and these encompass all kinds of creatures, as you will soon see throughout this presentation and this class. So the mediums of the franchise. Well, this is very important, because the mediums of the franchise cover so much. It's not just the video games, um, with the tournaments being uh, VGC video game competition. Um, the playing card game, which was very, very popular, and it still is, um, also known as TCG, trading card 
uh, game, I think. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too big into TCG, but we will find out. Um, you have the cartoon or the anime, as you can see here by Charizard. And you have mobile games like Pokemon Masters and Pokemon Go, as you all remember the huge hit of Pokemon Go of 2016. Um, and it still lives on today. It still has a, quite a sizable fan base. And then you have the manga, or for those of you that aren't uh, as caught up in media culture, uh, they're comic books. They're, co they're Japanese comic books. That's exactly what they are. Um, so as you can see, it's printed in a multitude of languages, Japanese, English. Um, I think we have the Spanish version right here. Um, I could be wrong, but it, there's just so many mediums that this franchise covers that it's so hard not to get involved in with it. It is the largest franchise ever. It's bigger than Hello Kitty. It's better, bigger than Mario. Um, Pokemon is the biggest franchise of all time. Um, so yeah. The purpose. Okay, we have this goal, we have this knowledge, what is the purpose of it? The purpose across all mediums of the Pokemon is for you as a trainer, you individually, you, to become closer with your Pokemon by battling others. So for a lot of people that looks like, it looks like dogfighting, which it's not, because we're not battling and betting money, um, although some people say that we are, um, it's not dogfighting. We're not doing this to kill the other Pokemon. We're doing this to become stronger, to level up. Um, some of you might say that it is for gaining power. You're not sucking the power out of the other Pokemon. You are literally battle. It's like training. You, you go to the gym, you do squats, and you get stronger. That's exactly what it is. It's breaking down that muscle, and then it's building it back up. Um, and the games, uh, specifically, that's what this main uh, class is focused on. Uh, in the games, there are a few other purposes, such as catching all the Pokemon within a region, which we'll get to shortly. Um, we also have becoming the champion, which will also be explained in just a second. And then we have catching shiny Pokemon, which are a super rare kind of Pokemon. Um, they're just offset color, but there is a 1 in 4,096 chance of catching one, uh, or encountering one, excuse me. And then... Um, if you collect all the Pokemon within a region, you get this thing called a shiny charm and that reduces your odds or it helps increase your odds to a one in 1300, about one in 1300. Um, so overall, but these Pokemon are super sought after just because they are so rare. Um, and so many people are trying to catch shiny Pokemon and that is the purpose. So terminology, it's great, um, that we have this knowledge now, how do we how do we translate that? Because there is some inside ling, uh, lingo um, phrases that sound weird to foreign listeners. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify a few terms that might be used um, throughout this video and through future class sessions. So a generation. This seems kind of nice. Generation, 20 years, it, you know, splits groups of people by age. Um, but a generation is a period of time, usually lasting three or four years in the case of a Pokemon, and containing a new region, new Pokemon, and games. Um, those are kind of the basics that are needed to start a new generation. Um, so when I say generation, just think new game. Um, the series is now moving forward into a new stage. Um, and so it takes about three or four years for a generation to come from a start to a stop uh, and continue into the next generation. So a region. A region is similar to what a region sounds like. It's an area of the Pokemon world, um, but more specifically, it will usually have eight gyms. Um, in one region, there's trials that you have to go through. Um, and Elite Four and Champion. Elite Four, um, so the eight gyms are trainers that specialize in one specific type of Pokemon and they are used as a test to see how far you've come and how much you are growing in your journey. Um, and then once you have all eight gyms, they will give each one will give you a badge for completing it and then you are clear to fight the Elite Four. And if you beat the Elite Four, then you are deemed worthy of fighting the champion for the title of champion. And if you defeat said champion, then you yourself become champion. So it's just a tier of getting stronger and progression. And so that's what I mean by a region and the components of it. So the Elite Four, as I said, uh, a member of a higher power in the Pokemon world, um, used to show that a trainer is worthy of facing the champion. Um, and then the term starter. This is going to be a big one. Starter, the first Pokemon that a trainer receives. Um, and so these are usually very rare Pokemon that only professors have. You can't find them in the wild. Um, they can be bred through eggs, but you have to catch these within, you know, th this is the first Pokemon that you are given and you only get to choose one of three. Um, so yeah. 
Without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and go into basics of Pokemon history. Um, and so we're going to start all the way from the beginning, so Generation 1. Um, this takes place from 1996 when the series began to 1999. And up here in the top right, we have a little sprite of what the game kind of looked like as a whole. Um, so the first games were fire, or, sorry, not fire. Um, they were red, blue, and then later on green and then yellow version. Yellow was to kind of follow with the anime. Um, but red, blue, and green are the three type or the three games versions that uh, were in Generation One. Um, and so the setting of Generation One is known as the Kanto region. This is the region where a lot of Pokemon trainers have found themselves starting out. This is uh, this was the first game that I played through all the way continuously. Um, so as you can see, here's a map of it. It's very detailed. You have routes. You start here in Pallet Town. Um, which is where our university is currently. Um, we also have a branch in, I forgot where this was. I forgot. <laughs> uh, we have other, we have other branches throughout many regions, but, um, yeah, Pallet Town is where Pallet University all began. And so, yeah, this is just kind of shows you the map and kind of the scale of every region. So moving on to generation two, this went from 1999 to 2002. So I was born um, in the midst of Generation 2. I'm a 2000s um, baby. So yeah, Year of the Dragon. Woohoo! Um, sorry for the blurry image. It looks more or less the same. Just it has skin color now instead of, you know, just plain white. Um, so yeah, this uh, Generation 2, the games that make this up are gold and silver version. And then followed by a crystal version, which is a remastered. Um, and as we're going through this, versions uh, differ. There's different Pokemon that can be caught. Um, different legendaries, uh, as you can see by the box art. Um, so versions do differ slightly. The main game is still the same. It's just there are a few Pokemon that can't be caught within game. So in gold, this Pokemon is called Ho-Oh, um, and it is the legendary Pokemon or the box art legendary. Um, and so you can only catch Ho-Oh in gold version. So if you are playing silver version, you can catch Lugia, which is this Pokemon's name, um, and you cannot catch Ho-Oh, and vice versa. You can't catch Lugia in gold version. And then crystal version is kind of the third remastered version where it takes the two games and it kind of shoves them together into a better copy. Um, but it does come later on in the generation, typically towards the end, but also it can be towards the middle. Um, so yeah, in the uh, second generation, Johto uh, is the region. Sorry, I don't have a better map. But to give you some sort of frame of reference, over here on the right is the Kanto region. Um, and then it is split by a mountain range. And so over here on the left is Johto. Um, and so you start here in Newbark Town, somewhere over here. Um, and you are basically on your own and you, you know, you travel through the Johto region. And then later on in the game, after you become the champion, of the Johto region, you are able to travel to Kanto uh, as a post-game kind of challenge. So yeah, moving on to Generation 3, as I have poorly edited my slides, um, we have Generation 3, which uh, ran, uh, ran from 2002 to 2006, which uh, four years. Uh, this is what the sprite looked like. Now, as you can see, it's looking a little bit more sprite-like. It's not necessarily the 90s version. Um, but yeah, we are in the Hoenn region, uh, which is a more tropical region. Lots and lots of water. Um, and so, yeah, you start here, I believe, in Little Root Town, uh, which is right here, tiny little city, uh, village um, inside the dense forest of Hoenn. But yeah, uh, here you have uh, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, which are the two version exclusives. And then you have Emerald, which is the remastered version. Um, special thing about Generation 3 is that um, between Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, there were remakes of the games known as Fire Red and Leaf Green, which were are remakes of Red and Blue, um, not necessarily Green, um, since that was I think I think that was Japan exclusive. So yeah, uh, but remakes of Gen One games. So we revisit Kanto here, but with updated Gen Three uh, engine and graphics. So yeah. We revisit Kanto for the... This is the third entry of Kanto so far. So yeah, Generation 4. Now we are getting a little bit more into the DS era. Everything else was on Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Um, Generation 3 was on Visual Boy um, Advanced. And so yeah, now we are here in the DS era. 2006 to 2010, uh, Generation 4. Uh, is home to Diamond and Pearl. Those are the two version exclusives. Followed by the Platinum as the remastered version. 
And we are here to explore the Sinnoh region. The Sinnoh region is my favorite region. This was the first game that I ever played. I didn't play all the way through it. Um, but Pearl was my very first game. So I do call Sinnoh my second home. Um, and so, yeah, this game is very, very um, diverse in its playset. So, yeah. Um, later on in the generation, um, I believe it was between Diamond and Pearl. Uh, yeah, in between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, we had remakes of the Generation 2 games um, with Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So they replaced Gold and Silver with updated Gen 4 graphics. And we revisited Johto and Kanto yet again for that late game experience. So fourth time overall that we have visited Kanto. As you can see, it's a little bit biased. Um, so yeah, next up we have Generation 5, which ran from 2010 to 2013. This is my teen years. This is kind of where I got a little bit involved in Pokemon. I got curious at this point. So as you can see, now the sprites are fully moving. Um, and great animation right there. So yeah, it, Generation 5 started off with black and white. Simple, just black and white. You know, nothing nothing too bad. It, it does make a little bit of... It, it's very weird because black has the white legendary and white has the black legendary. It's very confusing. Um, but yeah, here we are set to explore the Unova region, which is based on New York City. Um, and yeah, here, if we go back all the way to generation one, um, I will explain a little bit about the type. So this is based on the Kanto region of Japan, which I will go ahead and I will throw up a little um, area of where that is actually located in the real world. Um, then Johto is just, it's right next door to Kanto, also in the real world. Hoenn is based on some islands, I believe in the Pacific Ocean. It's not really based on a part of, I think it, it's based on like a more southern and western part of Japan. Um, and then yeah, um, let's see. Sinnoh is based on the northernmost island of Japan, I believe. Is it Hokkaido? I think, I don't know. I can't remember. Please don't quote me on that. Um, but it is based on the massive island up at the top of Japan. Um, and then Unova, we finally move outside of Japan and we move to New York City, uh, or what this gener or this region is based on. So yeah, Unova, definitely representing. Um, then we didn't have remakes, we just had version 2. So instead of doing one remastered version, they made sequels. And so we had Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2. They just slapped a big old number 2 and sold us the same game. No, they didn't. They there's the Between these versions, there's actually a wild difference between the games. Um, besides starter Pokemon and Pokemon overall. Um, but yeah, next up we have Generation 6. Um, we now move into the 3DS era. We now have Pokemon models instead of sprites. So Pokemon can be captured from every angle that we choose. And so this ran from 2013 to 2016. Um, and yeah, so we start off with Pokemon X and Y. These games are actually really, really cool. I remember everybody being hyped about it. Um, I was in about seventh or eighth grade when I heard about these games and man, these games just look amazing. So yeah, we're in the Kalos region, which is based off of France. Um, and it's just very, it's all about beauty. It really is. There's a lot of Pokemon that are based on beauty. Um, with the 3D modeling, it just made a lot of sense. There was a lot of cohesiveness, and I think they did a really good job on Gen 6. Um, they didn't do remakes. They didn't do... A, well, they did remakes. They didn't do a remastered version. We thought that there was going to be Pokemon XY, and then a remastered version would be Pokemon Z, which was... It never turned out to be a thing. Um, Pokemon fans were really left high and dry with that. Um, and so that was a tough loss. But we did get remakes of the Gen 3 games with Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, as you can see, Groudon and Kyogre there. Um, they got a little bit more boosted, <laughs> uh, to say the least, in this generation. And overall, it was a really great generation. Like, it was really good. Next up, we have Generation 7, which ran from 2016 to 2019. Um, just up until this last year. And yeah, as you can see, we're still in the Pokemon models, and so they are just getting a little bit better. Uh, but the games in this generation are Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Um, this game is all about dark and light. We are in the Alola region, which is based off of Hawaii. So there's two, um, you know, there's we had New York City for the United States, and then we also have Hawaii. Um, so yeah, two places in the United States, and probably four in Japan. Uh, so yeah, Alola was just a nice game. This is where the trial captains, excuse me. Um, this is where the trial captains kind of came in, and there's aren't gym leaders, it's just trials, and so you do weird things. Alola was very weird, and Generation 7 was very wonky time for Pokemon. Um, it is very, Generation 7 is highly criticized, and it's not held in high regard, it's actually, um, it, it, 
in the in the Pokemon community, it's just not it's not well liked. It doesn't receive a lot of love. Um even though it's being the latest generation. Um, then after Sun and Moon, we had Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, which were kind of the version exclusive, the remastered versions. Um, and it was 80%, 80, 90% the same game. Um, just, you know, it charged you six more dollars for it. Um, also, I forgot to add in my presentation. Uh, also in Generation 7, there was Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, which were remakes of Pokemon Yellow. Um, also in Gen 7, so we revisit Kanto again. And that was the, that is the last time that we have visited Kanto and I, and I hope that it stays that way for a while. Um, yeah, too much love for Kanto. Can't say that enough. So yeah, next up we are moving on to generation eight, which is 2019 to the present. Um, it should end around 2021, 2022, depending on how long they want to run this generation. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we are still in Pokemon models, but this is where sword and shield Pokemon sword and shield have come out. Um, and that's about it. That's all we really know about Generation 8. We don't have remastered versions claimed. Um, the only thing that we do know is that Sword and Shield are getting expansion passes DLC, so it's just adding on to the games. Um, and so, yeah, we're in the Gala region here based off of Great Britain, um, more specifically England, but it does get the whole island of the UK in there. And yeah, this is where we're kind of left off. Generation 8 is the latest games in the series. Um, and there's not a whole lot else to say other than that. So yeah, that's going to do it for this uh, class as I see that I'm running out of time. Uh, make sure to do your homework. Next time we'll be picking up with the basics of a Pokemon. Um, we're going to learn a little bit more and dive into what makes a Pokemon so unique. Um, and so this was just a little history lesson. This was just to get your feet wet. Um, and so I hope you guys will join me next time um, for my part two of our Pokemon 101 class. Um, without any further ado, you guys are dismissed. Thank you very much.